Hello, and today we just want to talk a little bit about uh, DOK, Webb's Depth of Knowledge. And when we talk about DOK, we get a lot of different versions of how to work with it. So what I want to focus in on today is how to use Webb's DOK when planning and designing units of study, questions, and assessments. When I first learned about DOK, though, I misunderstood it because my prior knowledge was with Bloom's Taxonomy. And when you work with Bloom's Taxonomy, you're working with the verbs. And the verbs really helped me when I was talking about skills. But when I learned about it, I learned about it in connection to a circle. Maybe you've seen the wheel, the circle of DOK aligned to Bloom's Taxonomy. And the wheel is great for helping tap into prior knowledge. But when I tried to use the wheel when I was working with assessments and questions, I ran into a problem because the wheel took verbs like list and put list with DOK1. Okay, that's fine, but I can have you list very simple things and I can have you list incredibly complex things. So the alignment of verbs to the DOK levels actually doesn't work out perfectly. It's great for training and we use it when we're first connecting to Bloom's taxonomy. But if we're really gonna work with Webb's DOK, and talk about assessments and questions, we got to move a little deeper into why we have DOK. And the logic there is, if DOK levels actually aligned perfectly to Bloom's taxonomy that way, why would we even need it? So what I'd like us to do is just contemplate this graphic here, which is a little bit more of a square, but we use it because it actually shows the relationship of the DOK levels and I know they're numbered one, two, three, and four, kind of implying that there's a hierarchical relationship there. It's actually flawed, and we're very sorry that, that's, that we did that that way, but the truth is four isn't actually harder than DOK3. It actually goes sideways. It's a lateral shift, and I want to talk about that a little bit by sharing with you something that was taught to me by Karen Hess. And Karen has explained to me the chocolate chip cookie unit. And the chocolate chip cookie unit, she walked me through the questions within the unit and modeled for me how the DOK levels went with the actual questions, because they don't align to verbs. See, that's the thing. Bloom's taxonomy is all about verbs. DOK is all about types of questions. So let's take a look and run through the chocolate chip cookie unit from Karen Hess. So if I start off in DOK1, DOK1 questions about a chocolate chip cookie unit might be things that describe the concept cookie. So what's a chip? Describe uh, how a chocolate chip cookie tastes. So what does a chocolate chip cookie taste like? What does a chocolate chip cookie look like? How would I distinguish between chips and cookies? When we talk about DOK2 questions in the chocolate chip cookie unit, we're going to be looking at a skill, any skill connected to the concept chocolate chip cookies. So two skills I can think off of right off the bat would be the ability to bake a chocolate chip cookie and the ability to sell a chocolate chip cookie. So what questions would I have at a DOK level two? Might be, what are the ingredients in a chocolate chip cookie? How do you actually bake a chocolate chip cookie that tastes like a chocolate chip cookie? How do I follow a recipe? Now, when I'm at DOK level two, I'm at the most simple form of the question. So that's a basic skill. When I get to the questions with DOK three, I'm gonna take whatever the skill was with DOK two, and now I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. So the skill at DOK2 that we were working with was baking a chocolate chip cookie. So for DOK3, it might be, how do I bake a chocolate chip cookie at a higher altitude? How do I bake a chocolate chip cookie, but I don't have all the ingredients, so now I need to do substitution. How do I bake a chocolate chip cookie and double the recipe or have the recipe? Or let's go problem solving and creativity. Your oven is broken. How do I bake a chocolate chip cookie with no oven? So with this progression, the DOK 1, 2, and 3, 
I absolutely have all of Bloom's taxonomy. The highest levels of Bloom's taxonomy is located here in DOK3. That's where I can comfortably design questions that will go for synthesis and analysis, creativity, problem solving. So if all of Bloom's taxonomy is actually located in DOKs 1, 2, and 3, well, I can find that all right here. Then what, pray tell, is DOK4? So DOK4 is not harder. It's not some higher level of Bloom's taxonomy. What it actually is, and those of you who are familiar with heat questions or transfer of knowledge, um, transference, DOK4 is actually a sideways shift or a lateral shift. So I would take DOK level 1 and find its DOK4 counterpart or complement, where I'm asking the child to take whatever it was, recall at DOK level 1, and shift sideways, transfer the knowledge to another area. So let's take a look. DOK4, uh, the DOK1 question that we had with the chocolate chip cookie unit had us talking about chocolate chip cookies. But what if the child, throughout the entire unit, had no interest in chocolate chip cookies? So what if, I know it couldn't happen, but just pretend, they don't even like chocolate chip cookies? So now a DOK4 question might be, how can I design a healthier cookie? So now I'm not dealing with chips, I don't have chocolate, I'm not dealing with the, the chocolate chip cookie design. I might be having kale cookies, okay? Completely different concept, gone sideways. So that's a DOK4. Or design a better cookie. How would I design a better cookie? So let's try that now. DOK2, DOK4. So this would be a DOK4 messing with DOK2. The original questions I had in DOK2 were all about how do I bake a chocolate chip cookie that actually tastes like a chocolate chip cookie? The fundamental skill, baking. So, what's a DOK for? How would I go sideways? How would I transfer that? Well, what else can I bake? If I'm not baking cookies, because cookies was the original context. Cookies was the original concept. So what else can I bake? I can bake brownies. I could bake a cake. So, how can I take my knowledge of baking and bake a turkey. How could I take my knowledge of baking that I learned from chocolate chip cookies and bake a cake, okay, or a casserole? So that would be a DOK4 messing with DOK2. One more, let's see it happen. So DOK3 was the highest. That's where we actually were messing with the concept of baking cookies and we were putting it at a higher altitude or we were substituting ingredients. DOK4 is not harder it just goes sideways. So take exactly those same skill sets and apply it out of context in a different arena. So we were baking a cake. So bake a cake at a higher altitude. How do I bake a cake if I don't have all the ingredients using substitution? How do I bake a turkey but I need to double or triple the recipe? So there we see the DOK4 being that lateral shift, a sideways shift, out of context of what I was working on in the original unit of study. Anytime I take what we have learned in context and I shift it to either the student's personal experience or perhaps even our local community or just in any other context, I've reached my DOK level four. Okay, so it's all focused on the questions it's focused on the assessments, and the verbs, although helpful, actually limit our ability to use DOK in the way it was designed to be used. So for those of us who are using that wheel with the Bloom's taxonomy aligned, that's a fantastic start, but don't be afraid to step away from it. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, the verb isn't what I have in context there. I need to look at the nature of the question and the nature of the evidence and make sure I have recall with my DOK1, a basic skill with my DOK2, a strategic thinking with my DOK3, and then that extended thinking or that transfer of knowledge with my DOK4. Thank you very much.